Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. This month, we're raising money for the Spot Project. As you'll know, the Spot Project in Gambia is where Sam and I first met, and out of that, Freshly Grounded was born. Alhamdulillah. So it has, so it has a very close place in our hearts. This year, we're raising money for a health clinic where women can give birth safely. Currently, women in this village of Chamia often have to travel by donkey cart and ferry across the sea for hours to the nearest hospital to give birth. Imagine being nine months pregnant. Now, brothers, it's going to be hard to imagine, but sisters, okay, I'm not going, so basically, you're not, ah, oh, I've ruined it, okay, so imagine, nine months pregnant, either you, a family member, your wife, the the last thing, the, or the first thing you want to do is provide them as much comfort as possible, the, you know, you need to rush to the hospital, and it's all systems go, and I imagine then, in all seriousness, them then having to like take a donkey cart to try and get a ferry. And and last week I told you guys of a story of this woman. She got the donkey cart to the ferry place. The ferry had gone, so she had to get a boat, and she ended up giving birth on the boat. Um, and that's uh, this health clinic changes that because they'll be able to give birth safely with professionals, and they'll get the right care. That sister, even though the baby was born fine, she's still dealing with post birth complications, and so um, that's why this. Uh, health clinic is needed it's also a multi-purpose center so it's going to be used for a few other things um but you guys can help by donating at spotproject.org forward slash freshly grounded that's spotproject.org forward slash freshly grounded we've also launched a special edition of our highly sought after game here we go we have also launched a special edition of our highly sought after game entitled the game the special edition, however, is a Ramadan edition. So it's entitled, you guessed it, The Game Ramadan Edition. And uh, it's a pack of 60 conversation cards to help you boost your Ramadan conversations with loved ones. But just don't take, but don't just take, man, I think this is only week two of me doing my intro by script and it's taking me time. So have patience with me, guys. But let's wheel it up and go again. Okay. <clears throat> We've also launched a special edition of our highly sought after game, The Game. And this one is a Ramadan edition. And it's a pack of 60 conversation cards to help you boost your Ramadan conversation with loved ones. But don't just take my word for it. In fact, take my word for it. Because editing other people's words is going to be too difficult and we're fasting. So take my word for it. The game is great. And it's highly sought after. And... Um, I don't know what that means. It's just something you say. It's highly sought after. Head over to shop.freshlygrounded.com. That's shop.freshlygrounded.com. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? So if you're watching this um, episode of Freshly Grounded, it's uh, this is the best that I am going to be able to do for you guys this week. As I just had a baby. Alhamdulillah. Now, I didn't necessarily have a baby. Oh, the referee just headbutted the ball. Did he? Yeah, and he had to pause the game. Oh, no. He headbutted the ball and also... Yeah, he's just paused the game. What's happening? Oh, someone kicked the ball at the referee's head. They're arguing we don't have the volume. Um, this is the best I can do for you guys. It's uh, first of all, the last 10 days of Ramadan. Uh, I actually um, pre-scheduled a lot of the episodes. So a lot of the episodes that you guys would have seen in uh, Ramadan this this year, this month, they were some of them were shot... In, uh, completely outside Ramadan, weeks before Ramadan even came in. Yeah, your hand, yeah, you might have knocked your thing. Oh, yeah. 
uh, weeks before oh, Ramadan, yo. weeks weeks before Ramadan came in, or uh, still like a week early at least. So this is actually the first <laughs> proper Ramadan episode of Freshly Guarded, and it's also the last uh, Ramadan episode of Freshly Guarded in this year. Uh, but I, I basically I knew that um, we were gonna have a baby, right? Like yeah. if I didn't know, that would be really <laughs> very weird, really worrying. You didn't want to keep it a secret, man. Yeah, really I well. knew, but it was because I knew I, I and I knew that Ramadan was also coming. I knew that the baby was during Ramadan, and I knew the ba- the Ramadan was happening. I, I scheduled all my episodes in advance, and so no, I'm sure. uh, I smashed it, man. You I didn't, didn't manage to schedule all. the fourth one, and so I called you up and I said, "Bro, can I just put some mics on and just I need an episode yeah, this man. week?" Of course, anytime, man. Anytime, man. Nah, bro, I always appreciate you calling me to. Ooh. Calling me to, <laughs> I always appreciate <laughs> you You're calling me to be on a podcast, man. Regardless, it's always nice just to connect with the the audience and your listeners and and you as well. Because to be honest, apart from the podcast, you probably don't even get to sit together for an hour to have a chat these days. Yeah, I know. Especially yeah. like during Ramadan and like like how the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Like, even since um, Cairo has been born. Yeah. It's been hectic for you because you've got three kids, and um, I don't know. I was saying to I was saying to our sister yesterday i was like well, she was asking how's the jump from one to two and i said i don't know how omar does had done the jump from two to three but, but i was relative though man because i was speaking to sam earlier about the same thing he was asking me the same question i think it's relative for everyone man you can't be like a one size fits all yeah man i mean the different there's different challenges like now the challenges are so much more around um like efficiency i think like uh, thinking about planning like make sure for example when Sienna goes nursery make sure you've got her clothes ready in advance like you know like knowing their breakfast routine like it's not so much whereas with the first one we could kind of just like okay when we eat she'll eat type of thing yeah no wait for the that. coffee <laughs> uh, but now man just, I think I think it's more that um, but we're just we're still trying to find our feet bro I don't even have the, I don't know the answer because it's only three months in so it's such a whirlwind right now it's mad though bro it's hectic man it's hectic but so it's so beautiful man but yeah, you, you, you too bro yeah. mashallah man like that's 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 amazing too and that has its, you know so many beauties and it's oh, challenges oh no no way is that penalty I didn't no no it's the 90th minute four minutes left yeah oh no that's Oy, it that's it yeah that was the fourth minute? I believe so. Oh, Chelsea in the final? Yeah, Chelsea, Man City, Champions League. Thiago Silva is making dua to... I don't know what religion he is. Wow. It'd be really cool to hear this right now, wouldn't it? I hate that I'm now into football. I hate it. Brother, I, I, no, me too. I can't stand it. Because it's, 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 it takes out so much Jimmy, time. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Yeah. And I, I know you become about, invested. I, I know stuff about players that should know. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I also... The other thing that's annoying about enjoying football is um i don't have a team uh, you yeah, don't either no, no. and so i don't support a team which is incredibly annoying i did support arsenal i used to tell everyone i supported arsenal no go ahead so it. who is it rich yeah so what we were saying before you had a phone call uh i mean it's been so long now <laughs> since that moment that it feels <laughs> useless having that conversation but i was saying that the kid's probably two years old by now <laughs> I was saying that I um I don't support a team. And that is, 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 is a rubbish conversation. Let's move on. <laughs> Do you support if you had to support a team, who would you support right now? Oof. Go on, then let's move away from this football lad chat after because oh, Nah, you know what, man? I, I, I feel like I've inherited Man U because of Man U. Um, listen to me. I'll listen. Just because of my my friends, my in laws, like they're all Man U supporters. I'm surrounded by Man U supporters. So that's that's the truth of it. So mm. I feel like I've in, I've like Got this this un, this kind of unasked for bias. Um, Kev, who Kev was man, you is Vichy Kev. Yeah, my father-in-law, my entire family. Really? Yeah, man. So that's like it was always a thing when man you were playing. So I think basically because of that, but I don't, I don't sport? support them. I don't think he supports anyone really. Maybe okay. Liverpool, maybe Liverpool, maybe. Okay. I mean, just any I'm still picking the first Asian team that everyone every Asian supports in it. And the other team, if you had to pick one, would you say Man City are pretty good right now? But that's like one of those stupid things, isn't it? Like, yeah, I've un- I want to see. City, but do you know what it is, bro? I really enjoy watching City play. Yeah, like so. Love, yeah. so I, the style plays amazing. The man. problem is though, is that I don't think you can support a team because I I feel like I support. This sounds so silly, but like players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> There's certain players that I just love. It. It's a pleasure to watch. Right now, my favorite player to watch, hands down, Phil Foden. Yeah, I love he's watching amazing. Phil Foden. Uh, yeah, I agree. He's he's that touch on the ball. Everything. He's just amazing. Yeah, but um, he's incredible. And so, like, if he was to leave City, all of a Isn't sudden, it crazy that they're like man like that is like 19 years old, 20 years old. It's insane. And, it's insane. And Even in Mbappe, people are so young. They're so young, man. Because yeah. we used to be young. Yeah. Didn't we? Like we used to be the future generation. But yeah, people would say. 
like oh you're you're so young remember when people used to be like oh yeah like he's only 17 they'd be like yeah i'm 17 mm. now and it's I, like, like you got three kids bro there's five kids between us <sighs> mad isn't it very um, very very uh yeah so I, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to say bro but um uh I don't think I'll ever support a team because, like I said, because then, then imagine somebody who supported, like, I don't know, back in the day when they were at their prime, Chelsea. I mean, it's hard. You can't say it because... Then, uh, Do you Chelsea ever see, fight. like, old footage of things and then think to yourself when you're watching it that, like, those people there had no idea that this was going to happen in the future? No, I never think that. Oh, I do. Like, I, was, I was watching, like, a old, there's an old, like, football match of, like, I was watching highlights of like an old final but from back in 2003 and it was one in 1998 and I was thinking was like 1998 one was a man it was a man new game but this one like Beckham Neville all them were playing mm. and I was watching it it was, it was man new Arsenal and I was thinking that's 98 I said like so many world events hadn't happened yet I was thinking like, if you invest in the Amazon at the time mm. these silly guys on the pitch if they would have <laughs> I'm thinking all these silly things I'm like you guys like, no one knew it's, obviously it's just a, it's such a very stupid thing to think because the same way of being now and then thinking about it in 2050 yeah, it's but it's just funny that like, when you're looking at the screen and you're like these were real human beings running around or people in the crowd sitting there that had no idea like what the world would be like to it. now we're in that space mm. in hindsight it's just so fascinating about like all the opportunities or the thing or not even just that like world events but like 9-11 hadn't happened yet which was such a pivotal moment in the history you know what I mean just all sorts but um, yeah I, I saw just did you know that some people called COVID COVID no I had no idea okay. that's insane continue that is insane go on let, see if you can finish the thought you're about to be on now because that's, that's really going to hit you now and now I can finish it. <laughs> I I saw the uh, just a final conversation about football because I'm a newborn baby when it comes to football. Where I have no knowledge of it, but uh, I saw Premier League put up a post or Sky Sports put up a post saying, um, "Who's the first name that comes to mind?" And they had a picture of the number ten shirt. Who's the number? Who? Which number ten? Who comes? Oh, let me see if it's the same because nobody commented this person. Who comes to mind when you think of the number ten? I think Mike Lowen. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, and no one with Mike Lowen. Everyone's yeah, like, because I think used to watch, like, you know, I think it's because that remote program Zero to Hit. Yeah, Zero, Zero, Zero to Hit. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great program. Excellent. No, that's not. That's <laughs> the joke. <laughs> no, but he's okay. sitting there. But we should move the conversation. What do you think you? about? What do you think about people who, when you were younger, would have this mystique and this allure mm, about that them? Mike Lowen. <laughs> yeah, and now look at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a pundit. <laughs> <laughs> Even the word pundit. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like you see them and you're like, man, come on, like I. Like not that not that's not great. I'm just it saying. It's great. Is it great? <laughs> yeah, like, people would kill to be a pundit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were earning. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you feel that you've seen Gary Lineker grow old? He, man never used to wear glasses, and now he looks like a granddad. Yeah, but have you seen his brother? No, his brother's a proper womanizer, man. Oh, is like, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Wayne. Wayne Lineker. <laughs> I've heard that yeah, name. I've heard him, that bro. name. It's a funny guy. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> look, my point is, is that like this funny just how like over time. Yeah, it's so, so, much, it's so funny. Is that I saw a post about Ryan Giggs the other day, and it says something like, "Yeah, it's really it's, bad." It, obviously, like all the stuff that he's going, um, he's like yeah. accused of and, and going to court for, and someone tweeted saying, "What? So you're telling me the guy who cheated on his wife with his brother's um, girlfriend is a bad man?" <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's very difficult to maintain uh, a um, reputation for a sustained period of time, even past your relevance. Like that's so underrated, bruv. Like, I think people who have that. done work, who have done it really well, like hold that legendary. Have you heard about? Like, did, you, did you see what the memes about Bill Gates, bro? Yeah, uh, Bill Gates. They're saying um, Bill, uh, Bill Gates. Go, <laughs> there was like this Reddit thing that was going like, yeah, shit. Uh, they really threw it out the window. Then it was like, yeah, they could have. Um, uh, I wish things could have excelled. <laughs> that was like all these yeah. things, bruv. Like, like posting like the Microsoft broken screen and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And or like someone, someone, like, someone, someone, to, someone should have meme like of like teaching Melinda Gates how to use a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, bro. Yeah, there's there's so pictures of like funny. Jeff Bezos and like Bill Gates. People like if <laughs> like if Your Jeff person. Bezos and Bill Gates, bruv, it could, anyone. You know what I mean, like yeah. the nerdiest guys, bruv. Like what the hell. So funny. You know man. what though, bro? Um, yeah, I mean that's the topic for that's the topic, that's the discussion for a different day. On to the topic of um right now. I wanted to kind of uh, speak a bit about the fact that I've had a baby because um I, I announced it for the first time uh, when he was born, alhamdulillah, but I also feel like I kept it for nine months from all of 
the um, listeners who I share so much of my life with. I like have this weird balance between like sharing almost none of my life, but then almost, also for the last five years sharing all of my life. So I feel like I always owe it to them because like feel like extended family. Um, and I thought the best way I could do that is like have a chat with you because this is our first discussion. This is our first sit down chat, like you mentioned earlier. Um, where we're just sitting down having a conversation yeah. since the baby was born. We haven't even spoken about any of that really. Mm. And um, it's nice to be on a public platform where um, those people who I see as like my extended family can also like almost join the discussion. Yeah. So um, for anyone, for those listening, this is literally the raw like conversation but that like Omar and I haven't even spoken really probably like obviously we had a few discussions like when, when he was born, I was, I was texting on like the family group chat and stuff and, and you you said the first thing you said to me was like, did you? In fact, the first thing you said to me was, did you cry when when Khalil was born? And I said, yeah. And it's interesting because I didn't cry when Zachary was born. Really? Yeah, but I cried when Khalil was born because um, the reason I didn't cry when Zachary was born is because because it, it was because he was struggling. He was having those yeah, breathing difficulties. Bro, because he was having those breathing difficulties and stuff, and they put a mask straight on him, and he got t- he got like he was getting assessed like. I instantly went into like overprotective mode. Fire I didn't flight. go into like, oh, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. And so because of that, I didn't have a chance to get emotional to like settle in because I instantly, almost like instantly went to dad mode, bro. Like I was so worried about him. With Khalil, I did cry. And the reason I cried with Khalil was because as soon as he came out, I could see that he was all right. Alhamdulillah. Because I could see his skin was really red, which is they say that is something to look out for as opposed to like them having that really pale gray skin. And also he cried. Because of those two things, yeah, like it was just a massive sense of relief. And I cried, but I was trying to fight it back. So I was like crying and also trying not to cry. So I was like, you know, weird thing. I was like, because I remember, I remember when Zachariah was born, I, I came to the hospital and I saw you and we were, we sat in there. Oh, sorry. Um, I cried when I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but, but this time round, did you feel, because I remember that time you felt so unprepared. Mm. So you were saying like, you were, you were, you were crying and you were just saying like, uh, I'm a dad, like I don't know how to be a yeah, dad. Yeah, how to break down, yeah. And um, now, was it more of a, do you feel more comfortable with the idea of the fact that like, you know, having a second child is not so daunting because you may have to do it? Because your, your, mashallah, your relationship with Zachary is beautiful and it's so effortless. And I think most parents, I once again to it, realize mm. that it's actually, like b- b- you can overthink it beforehand, but when you get into it, it's something that becomes very natural as well, doesn't it? So were you, were you a lot more comfortable with the thought of that as well? Did that not cross your mind so much? Like how would I handle two kids? Uh, yeah. So uh, to give context, when uh, Zachary was first born, I was like, uh, uh, it kind of uh, it makes sense um, actually like mentioning that, that I hadn't cried when I saw Zachary for the first time because then I did, like you said, like eventually it all came out. So uh, when I saw you, it may have been like day two or day three of like Zachary's having been born maybe day two right because mm. the first day like we were in a hospital and even though you came to visit in hospital but it, everything was going on and so no visitors were allowed and stuff so um the, i cried when i saw you and i think that's the first time i cried and i i just burst out and had like a really like emotional like just release and that was when you and i were alone in the room so um and you and i, I can't remember i just for some reason just burst out i think it's because i hadn't cried yet and I had to, for everybody else, be the responsible one who's like trying to say everything's gonna be all right. And even though like I didn't know, like, cause he was having breathing difficulties and then he, we had to stay in the hospital because he potentially had an infection and then um, all of that kind of stuff. And so I was trying to be, or I was like naturally, what came over me was to be the person who was like, okay, I'm the dad now. Everything's gonna be fine. Keep me speaking to doctors. All right, cool. So then when I saw you, my older brother, probably that was the first time I saw someone who I didn't have to be responsible for. Right. And so when I saw you, and I, I just burst out crying, and I was just like, I'm so. I think I was scared. I wasn't. It was. Mm. They weren't happy tears. Not that I wasn't happy, but they were like scared tears. I, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like. I've had, I had to like I didn't even know I had to like probably change the sometimes when I go from moments that I think to myself it must be so nice to have an older brother yeah because oh, I'm not <laughs> no because <laughs> my son could have me right <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean I mean the cousin of my older brother I mean because in those moments like you're saying you when you feel that. so responsible there is a moment where you can feel weak right Bro, 100%. but then the, 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 um, I don't necessarily have that so then you're but then I don't know if that that's, can also be a blessing because you're kind of forced to have to I think it's a blessing things. as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a bit of both. But then when you do have moments like what you're saying, then you do get a bit lost. That's why you go into this. But I, I think what I'm lucky in is that you're so mature 
and much more mature than me in some ways as well. So the the the, the, <laughs> the time difference between us, so the the age difference between us is so uh, so small. That's as if we're the same age. So I think yeah. maturity wise, it does feel as if I have an older brother as well now. Um, but yeah, I, I I think I think to have anyone around you that you can be like, okay, I don't have to like operate as a way I operate with everyone else. You know. Yeah, yeah that's how it feels. Uh, but I, I will say this I think that what's beautiful about it is that Allah is the most just right and so I think that like you know that ayah in the Quran where it says that Allah doesn't burden a soul with more than it can bear yeah. I feel like a person who for example doesn't have an older brother uh, Allah's like equip that person in their personality and in their character to not re- to not require it. Right. Where like for example, maybe Allah knew we, we, the way. Well, obviously Allah knows everything. But like the way my character is, the way my personality is, is that I wouldn't be able to bear not having that older person who I can like be weak in front of whereas mm. you can handle it and therefore you don't need it so like I feel like it balances not that you never need it yeah. no, but I, I feel like though. you're equipped for it I definitely yeah. think that your person is more you have to apply that level of wisdom to it you're 100% right I think that that, that that gives you that grounding because it's, it's you know there's even when I recently heard someone say when, when calamities happen and things happen in the world it's so easy to say why me but it's very difficult to say why not me but it's important more important to say why not me you know mm. what i mean like who are you you're not any, anything special so yeah like you're saying like it could be anyone going through something it's important to think like that and it grounds you immediately you're like yeah i could just yeah it doesn't matter who i am what stature i have or you know where i'm in my, my relationship hierarchy my family why can't things happen to me you know and it immediately makes you then turn for those answers like you're saying towards especially in our in our case towards Allah as well because you're yeah, just, I had, you're I had one of many, thought yeah. about that earlier. I had thought about that exact concept earlier. I'm going to try and hold, remember it. Yeah. But in the meantime, answer your question. To answer your question with Khalil, I didn't have, I didn't have. Um, you said, did you feel that unprepared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, 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 bro, the, having a second kid is so much easier, bro. In terms of that bit, yeah. the anxiety, bro. I felt so much more prepared. And like uh, even now, bro, like there's so much less anxiety because. Um, you know, when you have your first child, as you know, everything, like the, the, the main thought that goes in your head is I have to keep this human alive. Mm. And so everything is about that. Mm. So it's like, oh, am I am I putting too much blankets on them yeah. in the night? Like, can they overheat? Or like when I'm changing their nappy, am I like doing it right? Are they going to get an infection because I'm clean properly? And you overthink everything. When you have a second kid, bro, like as soon as he did his like first meconium poo, which is yeah, horrible, yeah. Yeah. I knew how to handle it because I'd done the first one. And if he cried, I knew that it's not the end of the world. Like babies cry. Like as if they've been fed and they've had their nappy change and they've been burped and all that kind of stuff, you've ticked off that list mentally, they're fine. And whereas you don't think those things first time so 100% bro is so much easier it's, 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 a, it's a concept of earned wisdom which is uh, I think great as well which it literally is that it's like you're, you become wise through experiences and you earn that level of wisdom so you know the the type of person that would for example you know people that will have too many opinions about things that they've never experienced or be, but just because of hearsay or because of what they feel or think as opposed to when you've gone through something you, you've now experienced it so you become A humbled by it and so, you know, you're, you're not as insecure or need to be as loud about it because you know the truth. And secondly, what you do say about it is uh, actually holds value because it comes with wisdom now. It's earned, mm. you know what I mean? So the fact, like, like you're saying, you've had one child, now you've had a second child, you've earned the ability to have that wisdom of being a father of two mm. to an extent. Yeah, now you go through more stages of it as they grow, inshallah. But that is so difficult even before you've had any children, you know, which... Um, I think a lot of people as well, like some of the insecurities I have about having children or what reason they won't have children is because they'll overthink and feel like they've got this wisdom of like how life should be or could be or whatever. But really until you go through these emotions, you 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 don't really have the full picture of of that wisdom. But at that point, the most beautiful thing is is that you've gone through it. Mm. So now not only can you not reverse it, but you're you're also much smarter, you know better, and you know, you can handle things in in, in a much better way as well. Um so I think that's what you're going through right now is that that stage of that earned wisdom that your 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 opinion now of how to handle children and how to deal with things has has you know granted you that uh I don't know that level of thinking. Yeah, I think you see the end result as well because now Zachary is 18 months so I've, I've been through the whole process so when he's, when Khalil is inshallah like one month or two months I remember back when Zachary was, was that. With that being said though, so I, I definitely think that 110% bro, it's so much easier uh, the second time around in, in, in that in that respect, the mental yeah. respect, that like l- way less anxiety uh, and, and way less like unpredictability. With that being said, and so I didn't like, I haven't had, and I don't think I will have, like that big burst of like emotional, like crying. And stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I did a little bit of like sniffling when he was born and then mm-hmm. I, since then I've been right. With that being said, 
the next day I had to come to your house. I had to drop something off. What did I have to mm. drop off? Oh, that temperature gun. Oh yeah, I dropped <laughs> off the temperature gun to your house. And um, when I came to your house that day, I made sure to drop the temperature gun and just leave because I didn't want you to ask me how I was and stuff because I didn't want to break down. Because yeah. I'm very conscious of if anybody, if I would break down in front of anybody, it would be you yeah. because you're my old brother and I I know that I have the. Um, it's nice because I know that I have the like yeah. the unjudgmentalness of being around yeah, you. Yeah. I have the ability to be emotional around you and 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 not feel bad. And you're very um, willing to hear, you know, um, about things. And so I feel comfortable enough around you to be like that. But I didn't want to. Nobody wants to cry. Yeah, yeah. And so I went. So I made sure, like, I literally dropped you the gun and came because if you if we sat on that conversation and it was like more than me just dropping something to your doorstep i would have probably cried and probably not because i was unhappy or anything or even overwhelmingly happy uh, not that i wasn't overwhelmingly happy because obviously i was but more so because you go through so many emotions and your body didn't have to let them out yeah. so it comes out in a cry and so the emotions mm. i was feeling at that day were like really happy but a bit nervous you know what, kind of man, stuff. Like i'm just happy there, there there's it, those emotional points, if you actually really deep them, they come a lot from, um, our, our, we're always, uh, as a part of us is always still a child and still a baby, mm. you know, and you grow up so quick. You, there's, there's such little, short, such short time span between you literally starting, let's say high school, which is let's say a form of you being mature to then becoming like a parent. If, yeah. you, if you're doing kind of your twenties, right? You literally gone to school before you know it, you've then either gone uni or not or whatever, started your career. And then like in our case, we got married in our early twenties, you got married now and just had children. You're like, hold on a second. At what point did I even qualify to this level of, you know, maturity? But, uh, so deep down, some level of you, and a lot of times we, we still still got that in us, but where you know you do just want to let it out in a cry, or you do just want to you know um, just just feel like you need to be held or someone to talk to, you know, and it's very normal. And where you shut that out is when you try and have that kind of you know bravado about you, I can handle, I can handle it. But really, man, we don't like anyone, anyone, bro. Every the biggest butchers, maddest guy you see was a baby and would cry his eyes out for like the smallest thing you know what i mean that within you that's still you and that's not that old like 20 25 30 years not a long time so mm -hmm. we still have those emotional traits in us and sometimes in those moments where you feel lost or you feel confused or you feel overwhelmed the natural state is is like i have a cry for help or a cry for you know support or whatever it is um and we try to find ways of dealing with them um but but at the end of the day bro we still all have that within us man it's very very normal man i mean we shouldn't be shy to 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 go through that yeah, you're right. And I think that they they obviously healthy moments if they if they're done like scarcely yeah. because you, you and you know that as like because you think about the times like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would um break down and cry um you know and um seek support in his wife mm -hmm. um or like the sahaba who who before taking Islam were like they they were like the tough men, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and even once taking Islam they were obviously tough men. But they um they like they 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 would talk about how they would like be in tears like in the middle of the night like yeah. like praying to Allah and stuff. I think so. it's become very normal that 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 you know uh, manhood it doesn't necessarily have to mean you don't show emotion or whatever. It doesn't mean have to mean that man. You know, it's very normal to have to go. And you know how many of course you know because you're always around me. But you know uh, friends we've encountered and friends we've made who through those emotional moments we actually got to know them better, you know? Yeah. And in fact, it's taken even us saying to them it's okay for them to then get to that stage of being that open, mm. you know? And uh, because we all have it within us, bro. Like, and in grown men, like, think about it, like seeing a, a you know, you remember when we were, maybe when I was 18, you were 17, we were around people who were 25, 26, 27, and we'd look at them like, oh my gosh, these are like mature men who now, yes, would be 35, 36, which again, looks old to us, doesn't it? Mm. But we're those guys to like your Dawoods of now, you know, does that make sense? But we still, as grown men, haven't figured out as 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 some of our friends and, and people in our circle and they're 25, 26, 27, mm. you know? So the, the point of that is you don't always, you know, know what you're doing. You don't always have to figure it out and you do need those moments of being completely raw and open to find those answers um, and creating a circle around you, I think of, 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 of uh, being able to feel that way as well.
Yeah. That comes, you know, whether yeah. it comes to brotherhood or your spouse or anything, man. I think it's very important to to find a way of doing that. And a lot of times, man, just wanting to be uh, to vent or be heard, isn't it? It's, and it doesn't have to be through anger, like you're saying. In your cases, it was a joyous occasion, like I'm a child, but still feeling like there's a, you have a, a safe space in which you can express your emotion freely is very important, man. It's very important. But yeah, for, freely, yeah. like safe, in it, like a safe space where yeah. I, once you're done, you can move on and that yeah. person will like, protect your honor. That's a, yeah, and that's a responsibility, of course, of that, of that person. But yeah. you know, the right people around you would, 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 would enable you to do that. And I, I think that's very important, man. And it, you know, something, there's something so special as well when you had that moment with someone and you know for the rest of your life that only you two knew it happened. Yeah. You know? And now everyone on the podcast. <laughs> 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 We're alone in the hospital room by ourselves and our like Everybody thousands of people know that, that we had that moment yeah. Yeah. yeah well that's one of many isn't it yeah because you cry a lot <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've, the other ones are safe yeah <laughs> safely locked up um <laughs> you know what bro yeah um the uh the biggest change has been uh zachary and, and i i've like i feel so bad for zachary and I'm giving him so much attention right now. I'm like overloading him with attention and love because um, he he doesn't understand the change. He's only 18 months. And all of a sudden there's a new thing in our lives who's always around us. Yeah. And he's just confused, bro. And so at first, first two days, bro, anytime Khalil would cry, Zachariah would cry. Would like, as, as in like a scared cry, like his bottom lip would go and he starts crying. He stopped doing he's that scared. Now. He stopped doing that after two days. But still, we're like four or five days in uh, of Khalil being alive and Zachary ha- refuses to acknowledge that Khalil exists he does not look in his direction he doesn't look at him but he, he refuses um, and um, if you go look Zachary or Khalil he looks he literally moves his head face away like that and he um, uh, sometimes he goes quiet when Khalil's in the room um, and like puts his head down he just goes to be quiet I feel so sorry for him like he's just like he's like going through a th- he's going th- going through this phase right now he's like upset and stuff sometimes and Bro, so I've just been like every single day, bro. Like on the first day, like obviously we you know, came to the house, we had people around, but it, the, it was the first and second day we had like, you know, support and stuff. The third day, which is the first day we were alone, I literally took Zachary out and to the shops and I bought him some new cars. Just gave him loads of attention because he loves cars right now. The ne- day after that, I took him out again. I took him for a drive through and got him like uh, some popcorn chicken because he loves popcorn chicken. Um, and then I took him shopping. So I'm trying to like give him loads of attention. I'm, I'm giving him attention at the house. I feel so guilty for him, bro. But everyone I've spoken to, and, and you being one of them, is is basically saying that he'll get used to it. And this is completely normal for like an older child to like almost go through. But he's going through this phase right now where he's like acting up. And it's hard to see because you you know what I mean? So and, and Khalil's not gonna remember this. I'm like overloading Zachary of attention and I'm like on his side. You know mm. what I mean? No, no right thing, man. Yeah. But I yeah. hope that soon he gets over that though, because I really want him to um Well look, bear in mind that that they're, they're, that uh obviously kids don't know what they're doing and they have no way of expressing their emotion mm. and you're reading it through a lens of you being an adult and so you're yeah. deconstructing it as like you know, feeling sorry for him or you know, him acting up. But really to him it's just like look, he doesn't even know he's a, he's a real person yeah i was gonna say like i we, we might be really like almost like extracting a narrative out of this like, yeah, literally yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. like you're painting with a brush but no but the narrative is correct you're, he is um confused he's gonna be you know overwhelmed he's gonna be jealous like all of these things and you're doing the right thing but over oh, giving him all that love and you know showing the affection and yeah trying to get him to understand who his brother is but he's not uh, to him that's just another thing another whatever he didn't know what a baby is you know nothing you know what i mean mm. um, but very quickly man he will, he will just very quickly and it is like i said very common happened to you know many people as well that, that to, to have this type of uh scenario. how is it with caden and Kyra? because they're basically the same ages um yeah as like yeah same kind of the same man caden went through a phase he's he's much much better now the first maybe three weeks or so he would he would like yeah go for him man he would like he'd find moments i like, went when, when like you change his nappy and Kyra's lying on the floor. Caden would like like try and swing for him or like kick him or like all sorts, man. Like he would do it more violently. Yeah, like you'd find little moments of like trying to just get at him. Yeah, you know, but just, didn't let him. That was a way of saying it. But um, we obviously we had to discipline him, but you had to again be cautious not to like make him feel left out yeah. because he's trying to express an emotion. He's not actually trying to hurt him. Yeah, he's trying to express an emotion or trying to tell you something. So uh, it, it just took a little bit of time, man. And then you know, for at the beginning we couldn't leave. 
Cairo, like anywhere, like in a, in a car. Like we used to have this bouncer. We had to get rid of him, get the playpen over there, uh, which we don't need to use now because they're a lot better. So now the kids just use it to play in. Um, but the whole reason for that was to to put Cairo separate so they, so Caden wouldn't get to him. Um, but now he's a lot better. Now, yeah, now Caden will be sitting on the floor and Cairo will be right next to him and they'll be playing and nice. he'll put things on his chest and give him a kiss and Siano will come home, give him a kiss. So they've, they've got to understand that's our brother. And I think also because Cairo now can sit up, open his eyes, and he can like, make little sounds. Now. Like, not like fully by himself, but you can put you can put him up. You know what I mean? Like, you put him up to, to sit. Well, how does just seem like sitting like this? Yeah, and so forth. yeah. yeah. He, he just sits in that groove there. He just sits in that groove, but like, obviously you're with him. Uh, but I think because the kids can see like eye-to-eye -eye contact, mm. and if Caden and Sienna go near him, he recognizes him and smiles. Okay. So I think that those little things just like, warm their heart yeah, and yeah, they know yeah. that oh there's a connection here you and they, pro they probably they realise okay this he's not going anywhere no. yeah when like they were looking first, yeah. Kind of now think. yeah now in the morning when Kevin comes down he's like baby baby like, he's waiting for him to come down he comes down he's so excited that the baby's there like so oh, yeah but nice. bro again like, this, is, this happens within my it's the same Sienna just really quickly with, with Caden too so bro it's so, it's so common man so it's, again like you're not going through anything you know uh, extraordinary but you're doing the right thing in, in, in the way you're handling it yeah everyone's told me that everyone said that it's completely normal and yeah, expected man. and yeah the usual for this but again happen, it's, so. it's new it's, it's, yeah. it's still you have to respect the fact that it's a brand new experience for him it's a brand new experience for you no matter how many times anyone else has been through it it's still your experience you know so just, just take each step as it comes the day as it comes man like you, you'll, you'll figure out what works and what doesn't work yeah and they're not going to remember these times no they, they, look how quick everything goes man like mm. you're I don't remember when Caden, like I was just saying Shaz yesterday that if you look at pictures and videos of Caden when lockdown started, man, he was, he was like a, still a baby mm. and now he's like so different. Same way as obviously Zachariah, like mm. bro, Zachariah was for four months or whatever, you know, crazy. Now now he's, you know, fully like always walking and talking, like, well, obviously walking, but talking and everything. So they, they developed so quick that you don't even remember that previous uh, thing. So I, I, don't, I don't feel like I, just, even though it was only like, what, Kyra's only three months. I don't feel like I really remember that first month anymore because it yeah. goes so quick that yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, like, you know what I mean? You just develop, yeah. Um, Zachary is at that point now where he's like so close to talking. Yeah. He's like, he's like, uh, like just in the edge, like I want to give him that meta metaphorical push. Yeah. It's just like, he's so close, but like he, 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 because he speaks that baby language like a lot now. Like he's very close yeah he'll get that man he'll get yeah, that I can't wait. But, it's, 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 it, but even though he doesn't talk it's so much easier dealing with Zachariah because he communi you can communicate yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yes yeah. They, he did for the first time he did I said to him Zachariah time changed nappy and he threw himself on the floor and turned around and like lay down yeah see he's done nice. done everything now yeah. it's amazing man yeah see? it's nice it's easy to communicate and stuff yeah it's a good time man as well to have, to have a kid as well like now, right now where things are still you know, obviously lockdown, I'm not saying that's the positive, but the f the fact that you can be at home, yeah. you know, and, you know, um, with your wife and help out, like, that, it's so good, man. And, and right, even if it's last year to be able to be with Zachariah and now to be able to help him through this, fear, this period of time as well, you'll you're, you're you'll never get a chance like that ever, you know? So it's, it's a perfect time right now. And it's not like you're missing out on anything by traveling or whatever, you know, to go. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it also, like, refines like how you want to behave, like how you want to be productive because you realise that there's only so much time in a day and you now have a responsibility to look after two children as well as your work and stuff. And so it minimises like your wasting of time. It's kind of what we're talking about with football, but like probably on a more serious level, just like not wanting to like invest your time in dumb stuff because your time becomes more valuable as you have. Like for I remember we were having the conversation the other day and I'm, it's weird because I, I've kind of like, spent less and less time on social media but one thing i've really enjoyed in recent like weeks is twitter i've really enjoyed twitter and it's because it's, it's like fun and the reason i find twitter so fun is because it, I, I i relate it exactly to real life in that in real life whoever you surround yourself around with that's how you become that's how you start to think and, and stuff like that and um twitter is the same like i've heard so many people talk about how toxic of a place twitter is mm. and I've not found toxic. I found it really fun. And I think it's because just like in real life, you it's, it depends who you surround yourself mm. with. I think it, it depends who you follow. Mm. But like if you follow, we were talking the other day, like topics, like startup topics and and I'm following the uh, fintech topic and stuff like that. And then you're also following people. And you start, it actually expands your mind because you're like getting the latest news about how like companies are, the moves companies are making and stuff like that. Um, it's nice, bro, because you're now starting to, 
yeah, it's nice to log onto Twitter and just see what's going on in the world. But I've refined my I've refined my feed to like a really productive, friendly, yeah, yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. funny, enjoyable it's, feed. It's, it's, it's um. Yeah, man, it's very easy to slip into a net of, you know, gossipy and, you know, uh, you know, over the top rumors. And you know, it's, it's very it's very easy to go into that part of Twitter as well. But I think the way you're doing it is perfect, man. I, I do the same thing as well, like using it for that um, and refining what I really enjoy going on now. Like the snippets of information and just understanding things and then your trending topics become... Uh, related to you as well, yeah. which is really nice, and I think we feel pretty, pretty much similar people. But yeah, you always feel like, and, and I think right now because we're getting through this, this like massive renaissance, you know, type of era in terms of how uh, things become more open, technology is evolving, and you know, and it's just kind of this this new ground being broken. It's very exciting to be. At it the does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Like right now we're living in a weird time where yeah, like things are being shifted for the rest of life mm. in a sense. Well, a lot of that is because the it's because um oh man i need to share, share a couple of things with you which are, which are so fascinating that that that, that um but they're around this the, the concept right now of of you know effectively things becoming decentralized and open and stuff as well but it's really the way you even see society now people are effectively becoming fed up of the idea of just uh like nepotism which is which is effectively like things just being inherited right through family royal family that's nepotism um, or like banks like being passed to someone else like the fact there was like so many bushes that have been presidents you know what I mean like you just it, it's the fact that with the first person yes probably whatever Mary and whatever but then it's inherited and therefore the people that are in that position aren't in that position because they deserve to be in that position they are in that position because they can add value to that position they're just in that position of power or whatever it is for the sake of it and that's the problem society is having now is they're pushing back against that because they're like hey hold on there are better way of doing things if you think about places like the government the government can't do things as well as most companies can yet they have the stature of being greater than companies if that makes sense you know but they can't pull together a website to save their life so yeah. this is these but they the, pay 10 million for it you understand these are things that people are pushing back against because they're like this i'm thinking that twitter make that information open mm. so everyone's like oh yeah i thought this too and now you can see it like Royal Family, great example, a recent one. And now those institutions, these things are realizing that your old school way of using the media doesn't work anymore. There was a great concept that I heard recently, which was that there's, there's two things that you need to really be able to uh, uh, build something great. You need to have a great product and to have great distribution. And often you have things that have great product, but terrible distribution or things that have uh, a, a terrible product but great distribution a government is a prime example of something that has a terrible product but great distribution mm -hmm. um, but for example like someone writing a blog post on their website is an example of something with great product and terrible distribution mm -hmm. you know but it's very hard to match both and when you match both is when you get something killer but often we have one or the other which is why you have a massive this is what people are trying to solve now because why do you have someone who can write amazing tweets that fast will read that is actually so powerful yet yeah, it's so you know, underwhelmingly under the radar, uh, overwhelmingly under the radar, but then you have like, the government can put out as big as other faff and it's just distributed everywhere. You understand? But do you think that there's like two, um, there's like two sides to it in that um, there's on one, on one side, there's people who are really sincere with this, trying to make a change in the world because they want the world to be more fair. And then on the other side, there's people who are using that narrative to, I don't know, like, are using that narrative to uh, as an excuse to like push their thing forward right like um uh like they can see that there's this like popular uh, f culture and fashion now of like you said decentralization or um and, and stuff like that and then like trying to create a product or or, or business that calls to that but really if you look like deep within their heart yeah. they're not really sincerely trying to like make the world yeah, a better yeah, place correct, correct. they're trying to use that narrative to like correct. you know put money in their own pockets do you but, think that's the case that's how i am seeing it look you have opportunities opportunities in any in everything and anything that ever exists yeah, for, and especially when things start to get popular yeah. that's almost a given however almost one of the fundamentals of like success are those people that do it for for a purpose greater than that of the short term or the monetary return, you know what I mean? People that like um, actually are trying to build something for some sort of greater purpose or because they want to have an impact, albeit, yeah, there's a commercial viability to it, but still they want to have some sort of impact. Um, and those are things that, like, that like, is, is, a, is it literally like, 
it's like with anything man if you believe in it it will, it will last because it's genuine it's from the heart or it's something that you really feel and the heart when you're building a company is that culture mm -hmm. if you put a culture like that in a company or in a product that you're building that will stand coinbase for example great example it's worked because it, everyone's on a mission to make the internet um uh, i'm sorry uh make um uh, uh, econo uh achieve economic freedom around the world that's 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 a, that's a joint mission, but because they're on that mission, their products then speak that volume. Whereas someone that yeah would just launch like an NFT project or something for the sake of it because it's just a cool thing to make money off. Money right now, yeah. So. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to like understand who's doing what and and who's like who to kind of support. But, but, but to be honest, bro, I don't think it's I don't think it's worth worrying about who's doing what. It's more so I think at this stage equipping yourself with the the conceptual knowledge. Like if you understood back in the 90s, a conceptual knowledge of the internet networks and what it was c capable of doing, you would have been the the Jeff Bezos of then, you know, versus the Blockbuster of then or versus the Walmart of then or whatever it is, you you would have understood that. And there was those few people, there was, there was these people who are like the big dogs, the billionaires, the we've know everything, the, you know, egotistic kind of arrogance people yeah. who are like, the world will never change. We understand it versus there's always someone who's like no something's changing and you don't see it coming yeah and that's what we're in right now yeah. whereas that happened in the internet then it happened in social media it's now happening through blockchain where people who have built up multi-billion trillion dollar organizations and, and infrastructures banks being a prime example you know banks are have that kind of arrogance banks must be about shaking them. In their boots yeah right man because but, but the, because they're legacy operations to them it's like how can we be defeated but it's not a matter of how, uh, of how. It's a matter of when. And secondly, the people that are doing the disruption, bro, they're not concerned with trying to defeat the banks. Yeah. Their purpose is so great that they know that as long as they continue on their mission, they will have to fold, and those institutions will have to conform. It's not a matter of you having to make them. It's just the way the world will be. And but those are the great people. And like I said, your Bezos is of the world. Your, you know, anyone that has that long-term 20, 30 year vision. So people who have that 20, 30 year vision now are not concerned about who's dropping a project now or launching a company now, like what you're saying. They're thinking about the next 30 years and what they're doing if, that based on concepts of today. What if, and playing devil's advocate here, the, the, what if the system, like of, for example, banks is the best way of like a mass being able to like uh, manage an economy right like it's not great it's not a great idea for everybody to have as much freedom as possible with their money and so with something like crypto where people can have complete control over their money like what if that's like not a great idea do you know what I'm saying? Like, what if, yes, banking is so corrupt. Yes, like, there's so many issues with banking. Yes, you don't necessarily own your own money. And and obviously, like, from an Islamic concept, like, majority of banks that exist are, are, are like, you know, um, dealing with interest and, and stuff. And so, Islamically speaking, I guess, obviously without knowledge here, but, like, from my conversation with Mu'awi Ataka, Islamically speaking, it makes more sense to have crypto in that regard in a sense that if you know i know there's a i'm not going to go into like the difference of opinion on crypto because there is a difference of opinion but based purely on my discussion with Maria Tucker that i had on freshly grounded like the concept that you own 100 percent of your money and therefore it's not in the system of like interest and stuff i understand but i just feel like is it's like uh, centralization Right, so here's my here's what concept I'm putting to you, and this is so me to say it because I'm so like the person who hates change, and I know that you know that for me. But what if centralization works and has been working for centuries because people can't be trusted to make every decision by themselves? But all of a sudden, when like in crypto, you own 100% money, or like in um, I don't know, uh, uh, with facebook or apple you can like decide what um app uh, allows you to do x what if like when all of that when i can make all those decisions i'm not the best person for those decisions i mean i can see flaws in that argument already because who could say who is to say that a uh, one man in san francisco is ha is able to make those decisions Correct. for like almost well there's, 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 do, do you get my argument no i, I understand what you're saying yeah. but you, you're also implying that those people so here's the thing what you're basically implying is that there's a group of people let's say work at apple who are smart enough by way of education or knowledge that should be able to make decisions 
for society yeah or, or at least decision for the company which is their interest the stakeholders yeah, right yeah, yeah. but because of the size of the company now the effect of the decision they're making is not only a corporate responsibility and now has a societal responsibility yeah, doesn't right, it right, yeah. so that's why that's where now you do end up becoming like a governance and that's mm -hmm. why they have things that they and you trust issues now which is like well should you be able to have that level of control over what the general population could do that's one thing aside the second thing is evolution is natural right and especially now in this world you've got you take concept of like let's say you used to have you'd have paper then you'd have a digital form you have the physical form which is paper you then have digital form which let's say scanning the paper into the computer and then you had the completely digital form which is let's say microsoft word you then had similarly with um um uh, for example, like um, physical meetings, then it turns into Zoom, you know, like a, a virtual physical meeting, which will then eventually become AR, VR. Like it's like a virtual podcast as if you're, this is like a real version of you being here, but you're not physically here. Same way now currency, you had normal, regular currency. You had your PayPal, which was like converting that to digital format. And then you had now cryptocurrency, which is a completely digital format so it will always evolve in a way that would have a step change towards it becoming much more digital things becoming much more you know uh out of touch with you know real uh tangible accessibility but then when you're thinking about what you're saying with uh decentralization if you if you think about the idea that of what blockchain means it's a it's, it's literally a, a network of computers talking to each other yeah and those network of computers talking to each other means they're physical computers which means that whatever's recording those computers is fact yeah and that can't and it's also fair because uh because when you look into like the nitty-gritty of mining for example um only one or only one like string can exist yeah and therefore like it seems fair right? well well it's because yeah there's a record of everything it's it's unique yeah these are things have like us stamped um and now obviously why ethereum is so popular is because that's like a language right so like blockchain has uh, sorry bitcoin has a has a cap it has a has a certain circulating supply and it's also it was never created like a language or a programmable language where you could build apps off it because the creators of bitcoin wanted to be that kind of like gold standard that legacy they wanted to have that value which is why bitcoin is valued so high ethereum on the other hand was created as like a JavaScript type language that you can, that's why you have, all the NFT things you see, smart contracts, all based off, NF, uh, off uh, Ethereum because that has a programmable language to allow you to do that. But that's those contracts, the contracts, those codes that you get, yeah. that's the contracts and that basically puts it in time and that says, so for now, for example, let's play the game of Fassel buying a property. Well, that'll be a fact now. Well, Fassel buys a property on a, on a, on a blockchain. Fassel, you know, this crime happens. There'll be a ledger of, for example, when crimes happened. Like everything will be recorded down to the facts. So you can't rewrite history. Here's another mm. thing you can't do. You can't turn around and say, this guy existed in this country and this is who he was because we want to tell that story in, in history books. No, the facts will be on the ledger, mm. on the blockchain. You can't rewrite it. Mm. So this is why it's against these, obviously some of these bigger companies because they can't rewrite that. You can't make your own rules up. The system self propagates mm. and that's why it's powerful. So there's there's so many, and it's, obviously it's so deep, like even I don't understand it to the full, fullest extent right now, but even what I'm saying to you is the conceptual understanding of what it means is I think fundamentally important because then what it able to do is think about the world that it will evolve in the next 10, 20, is going to evolve in this way. It's happening already. There's way too much uh, money in it now. There's way too much uh, growth happening in that space. There's way too much you know, money being poured investment-wise into creating tools to, to expand this space. It's going to happen. You know, podcasts, computers, whatever, man. Everything's going to have some sort of format of that. Like... And just like um, every other conversation that you and I have, um, it, all, it like this kind of conversation is like r like even like reaffirms my like level of like um, assurity of Islam. Yeah, because we're basically talking about like what is the best way of like be governing. Full stop. What is the best way of governing? Right? Like, is it that like? Um, the governments and, and, and banks and this kind of stuff like just like old school and now like people are more in control of like the, uh, it, it, reassures, it reassures me so much so that like because it makes me think like well there has to be an answer like we're trying different things as a society and we're trying to like understand what's like more what's like morally correct and, and stuff like that and it, it gives me like so much faith in, in Islam because it it makes me realize that okay there is a creator and there is like a good there is a, there is a factual and correct way of doing this mm -hmm. of doing everything everything has 
uh, right way of doing it. And so these little things, like trying to figure out like the mode of um, managing money and stuff, as long as they like it's permissible, um, it's still like ultimately like there's so much reassurance basically being a Muslim because you don't have anxiety of like oh what's going to be like the next big thing. It's ultimately, like you know that there's rules set for you and you understand who has set them and if you follow them you're you're yeah you're, if you're you, good if you, to go. you look you can become obsessed when you're in that uh mode of let's say building or, or even what's happening now when people are recreating this concept of society like that kind of um i don't want to say uh something blasphemous but you know like you're feeling like you're you're all powerful you know or you you've got this level of control just because you're able to, you know, write something like this, you you could say that about people like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, for example, like what do they really feel or think, you know, with this yeah. level of control and impact and power, um, is that kind of like, you know, uh, mindset ingrained within them? You don't know, um, but also it's scary, and that's why we all, you know, we're, we're reminded that people like that can just die because they're just human like us, yeah, uh, and also the thing that they're building off and creating was created. You I know shall, I mean? I shall so see so what else, bro. Like, yeah. Is it, the, 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 one thing that just came to my mind um, earlier, which is why I said I'm going to try and hold this thought and now I remembered it now, is you know, you and I have these conversations regularly where you say like, we say like, why isn't there somebody who's like that level of um, success, Zuckerberg, um, or even like, that's like a bit of like an elite or unique example, because like there's not many people who are on the same, um, on the same level as Zuckerberg or Bezos or Bill Gates. But even if you look, look at look some levels deeper, right? like people who are like still billionaires, right? There's yeah. loads, of, there's loads more billionaires. What, we often have this conversation, and your frustration, and you're like one of the things that drives you wanting to be successful is that um, uh, is that you want to. It, 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 it is why are there not people who are that level of success that are like good Muslims, basically, or not not good Muslims? Because I'm sure there are many people, but why don't we know of them, right? Like. Um, and I'm sure like there's people, because uh, I think we spoke about this before and then loads of people are like, oh, but there's this guy and this guy and this guy. So that's fair, right? But generally speaking, that's like one of the questions that, or one of the things that we, we discuss. And I think that it's, I was thinking about that concept earlier and I was thinking, it's not really a surprise because we're told so much that the dunya is a distraction. And like, even in the Quran, we're told like to try not to be distracted by the dunya and stuff like that. And so maybe the reason we don't see that often happen is because people perhaps even who try and go in that direction in like a clean way, maybe uh, the dunya distracts them. Like having too much wealth, bro, could make you, uh, it's very distracting. It could make you, you like- Yeah, because you're, you're, it plays to your, your nafs, right? Like your- um, Desire. Desire, man. I think, I think with anyone, I think, uh, look, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very hard to pinpoint like specifically in terms of like, cultural uh popularity person that fits that mold and maybe if there was someone maybe there'll be too much pressure for them to keep that you know what i mean because of what it comes with and we have conversations ourselves like even though yeah we want to be on a mission to do something similar it's, it's it is very hard which is why i've said to you even like what are you guys doing freshly grounded like the as pure as you can keep it without even needing to have any relation with like you know um need we need to be a commercial project anything like that is probably better because then your intentions are fully pure and then you know why you're doing it and you're only doing it for that because there's the fact is that although the world is built in a way where money seems like it's the thing that we wanted to achieve it's never going to get us anywhere you know so it's always a distraction so the question is what would you do if you didn't have to earn the money but you still could do what you need to do and that's a, obviously a very cliche obvious question that people aren't asked, asked all the time and it's a very difficult one to answer so when where i think people do exist who are doing great things you know we've met some of them before as well who, who we know of um but people don't know them because it, it's better for them to just actually not be out there and for them to not actually be doing it for commercial purpose sometimes mm. and just to be doing it for the sake of something greater because that currency when the currency of to this world will never trade for them you know what I mean? It shouldn't trade for any of us. We should all be thinking about a currency that will convert in the next life. Uh, but it's not that simple, obviously, in the, in the world we live in. But, but yeah, having the, this, but by the way, you do have great people like, you know, Hamza Sortiz, for instance, like who do uphold these principles and, you know, people that do try and set that standard. Um, but again, the other thing is, I don't, I don't think it's like always sexy or glamorous as well. You know what I mean? That is, there's something about being rebellious, bold, you know, like, 
you let's say you're you, elk wine to buy Arsenal. Like, that's to be honest, big, like, yeah. yeah. But and, and even if you if you ran a company like Amazon, man, and you had these things going on with how you're treating workers, like utopia is so difficult to achieve. This is why we obviously uh, is everything okay? Yeah, it's impossible to achieve. Yeah, I mean, let me have a look. Uh, we'll try to carry on. It's just the temperature of the camera. We're not in our studios. We've got almost. It's a very radical setup. Um, no, I was saying utopia is very difficult to, to achieve. It's like impossible to achieve. To corporate, uh, yeah, in a corporate way, but that's why we believe in, in Allah being, you know, the most just and uh, we leave it to him. So maybe you're trying to solve a problem that is, is virtually impossible to solve. I don't know, but I think the part we can play in it and how we think about it is then the things that we can control, such as like how we make decisions, you know, how we, you know, uh, we get investment, get money, or, you know, what are the, what are the concepts of building a company or business that would normally lead you down a path of doing something that might not be Islamically aligned that you can then try and flip into, you know, the other way. Um, like I'm saying, for example, how you handle money, how you handle mm. your staff, your people, like the princ the principal things that, that actually stay true even without Islam, you know? I think the one thing that you've always struggled with this, with this is um, you want to make a big impact in the world. Like I know that what drives you is not is not financial. I mean, I'm sure like with everybody, you, like there's a definitely financial drive like for everybody. It'd, it'd be silly to say there's no financial drive, but I know that what drives you ultimately is you want to leave the world having left us like a really big mark on the world. And, mm. and I think that your like struggle is accepting that, um, that there's a limit, isn't it? You don't like there being a limit. Yeah. I think, I think see, like, yeah, knowing that, and there's any ceiling to anything like yeah bothers me because i'm like i need, I need that not to be a limit yeah like i could i need to be able to know that i can really dream as far as i want i, I hate giving caveats I, I i think that i think that's why i think that's why you and i maybe balance each other up because i think that you're extreme on that and i think i'm extreme on the other thing where i sometimes give myself a ceiling too much and the reason i think you're too you're extreme on it is you're probably not because um like you know you can look at things like algebra or coffee to say that like muslims have been able to like make an impact in the world um but i very much so um follow the concept that as a muslim you have to accept that sometimes um, there's only so far you can go in something um and that's okay because like our end goal is not necessarily like um like that deep mm -hmm. and or um there, there's certain things that's not worth risking your uh like your man for like i'm yeah. i know you're not doing that but and uh, along berica there's so much that i know about you that people don't know on a public platform that you within your companies um monitor and uh set guidelines for purely for allah's sake uh and and, and there's there's all business opportunities and stuff that you've turned away and that you can continue to turn away purely because it's not like islamically correct so i'm not talking about you here i'm saying that i'm of the uh, like uh I, I suppose like i find comfort in the concept that that that's the case that like there's only so far sometimes you can go but example you, i'll yeah. give you an example yeah um you might want to have the most um the the best uh oh man like i can't in any industry bro like the the the, the restaurant industry for example probably a bad example but uh, you might want to have the best uh, restaurant in the world right um but in order to to do that and to compete with the other best restaurants in the world you'd have to maybe like start like selling like alcohol or something like that and, and you have to accept as a Muslim I'm, I can't do that so then if, if if me selling alcohol is what's going to stop me from being the the biggest restaurant in the world uh, then that's just a ceiling that I just have to accept that is there and I'm and you, there's only so far I can go as a Muslim yeah. again bad example because you can be a very successful restaurant or even mm. the best restaurant in the world and not do alcohol but I'm sure there are industries yeah. where um, do you, where you ha there, there comes a time where you have to now do something that's yeah but, yeah but I think where we've had moments like that uh, those moments are it's very easy to make the decision opposite to that because you, you have your faith in Allah you know so you know that by saying no there's a power in that you know, I agree by saying that there's still a, there's still that there's still a ceiling there though yeah like I, I think that you have to at some point 
I, you probably do. I don't know. I don't know if you yeah, even have. I don't know if you have a um, exit plan, and I don't know if like you even publicly speak about it. But I feel like at some point you have to sell feed source um, because you're going to hit that ceiling. Yeah. Do you well, disagree? No, I agree with that. I Islamically agree. speaking, like yeah, you're going to. I, agree, ha- you're I agree with that, but that's not what excites me. What excites me, like I I I see all of the all of this, the things that I do as a game. To me, it's just fun. Like it's literally like like we very quickly were able to take the emotion out of money you know be able to understand that money can't control our emotion where where there's going to be times where we have none of it which we have had before there's times where we have a lot of it which we have had and both of them what's the thing that matters the most like your faith your family come on man you know what i mean so like the experience that i think young was one of the biggest blessings yeah because i'm not curious about what it feels like to drive a nice car to have money in the bank or to not have it, like, I, they don't, they don't, they don't, they, I don't, that fear doesn't worry me, like none of that, I revel in that. So the game of it, now to me, it's like the fact that the, the lo- like if losing was being broke, lost a million times, you know what I mean? So even now having a little bit of something is a win. And it so wasn't even the end of the world. It wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. So now you, the, the thing is when you become comfortable with the lowest possible denominator, like you're comfortable with it, you're happy with it, what's the worst case? I'm okay with it. You know, because my wife won't leave me. My kids will still be there. My family will be there. They don't judge me based on my friends will still be there. I'm okay with it. And what do I have? I have me. I have my creativity. I have my brain. I have my hustle. I have my grind. I have all these things. I have my faith. And those things are all I need. I'm not, I'm not like, even the fact that even the way our computers operate, everything's on the cloud. They have the cloud. You know what I mean? Like, what do you need? Mm. So the, as soon as I accepted and got to understand that nothing could control me, you know what I mean? Nothing, uh, uh, um, I don't have a debt to pay to anything. You know what I mean? To to the concept of money. I don't. And I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I'm just proving to myself the ideas and validating, like to just as a game, as a toy. So like even feed tools itself, sometimes there's no, there's there's not a big plan behind this. And sometimes it's just like, I feel like it's going to work. I have a strong inclination, you know, but the, the concept of creating creative efficiency at scale excites me mm. because I'm- that's where, I can, that's where I can but, meet you halfway. But, but that's where- it kind of goes. I'm like the idea of be- building creative efficiency and then l- adding a beautiful front into it with a powerful brand and serving it to a massive market. To me, that's a recipe for something that could be powerful. Mm. And yes, when it gets to a point where there's a comes that crossover where, yeah, there's an investor that comes on board that says, look, we'll put X amount of money into it. But you a big have to check. Tobacco grants, Bro, that one says in, uh, first of all, I'll thank you for the validation. I was going to sell the company probably now. Um, or I'll just think of a different option but the, I know where my line is because that's Fine. happened to me many times um, but that doesn't stop me from the. it's not like I have to have a massive company to be the person that I want to become because for me it's not monetary related it's about the idea of that the way you did it you know what I mean the fact that you were led by your curiosity you were led by creativity you weren't controlled by money because I don't want the future generations or my kids to grow up thinking that like money controls them or to go up thinking that like the way people perceive them controls them no it's how you feel about yourself how do you feel are you excited to wake up today and create something i'm only happy honestly the stuff that will pay me a lot of money i does not literally get me excited man at all and 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 those people will even know it you know what i mean because it's just the, the creativity and, I, and something that doesn't even pay me anything but allows me to be creative i'll be happy i'll do it for hours on end mm. but it's just how i feel you know what i mean so i i know that there's and it also makes me reaffirm my belief in the way we are as humans, man, that as long as you find something you truly have a passion for and enjoy, man, you, 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 you'll just continue to do that. Yeah, or where, where, I, can, where I can definitely like 100% uh, agree with you and, and, and ride that wave with you is that um, I, I, I do believe that where the world can be changed in a way where there's no ceiling is like being able to change the way things are done. And, and so like I, I sincerely believe that feed source will change and he's already starting to change the way people um, have their product photos done. And that sounds like such a, like, a niche thing to say. And it probably sounds really dumb like if you don't know about the feed source journey and about how currently people are, are, are getting that done. But then so would have Shopify if, you know, you said, I think Shopify is going to change. The president like, the of way. Shopify just tweeted today saying, um, we, we never had an unfair advantage. We just worked the hardest. You know what I mean? As bro, it's true, man. Like mm. no one has an unfair advantage. I don't have an unfair advantage. Like, I you think know, you do. No, but I don't. I don't think, bro. There's plenty of people that have 
you know you could say I have unfair no, your advantages. advantage could be that you could that you um i could design yourself for example right. like, i understand yeah i mean it'd be people like yeah who could, who could uh, who own a shopify for example code i understand that to it but it's not a, a fully unfair advantage because many other people that can do it, it's not a big enough yeah, that's barrier, true that's it's true. not a big enough barrier to entry yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh, an unfair advantage might be might have been capital for example or something like that but th these things are are you have to if you're if you're willing to pursue it if you're willing to work the hardest there's and there's a mode even i speak about it i feel myself get get like riled up yeah you can see because it. that level of like i don't think anything can be ambition and relentless ambition like a, a level of and you and i often speak this when you speak about freshly ground as well and i feel like i look for that in people that i work with and i almost feel i have to have that around me i have to have a i have to have a feeling that whoever i'm around or people that are willing to grow with me have that level of like we're gonna get there no matter what yeah. because bro it takes so it, it takes so much like to exist in this world and uh, and to feel successful in terms of like without money you know what i mean like to build a family to build strong relationships to be, feel comfortable within yourself bro that's it that takes a lot of work to you can't risk it all for like a cheap paycheck for example mm. so you have to have a level of resilience and boldness to be able to quote unquote say you know, see you later to stuff. And that's very important, man. And I think that, and it's very hard because society like, drives you into all these things like, look, this is exciting. This is, And this is why we all get sucked into it. Like it could be socials, it could be anything. Um, there's a point you made uh, earlier, which was about, um, yeah, I was, I'll say, I was going to say actually, when you were speaking, you were speaking about free talks, but I was going to say, even with, even bigger than that, to me, cre the reason creativity, yeah, I think, kind of encompasses most of the passion is because of, I do have a link to it with the Islamic world or perhaps even like our generation of Muslims as well in the way that I think uh, messages are, are, you know, communication is, you know, uh, laid out. Like we were so excited when Iman Channel launched for the prime example that it was a colourful colour, colourful cha channel. Does that make sense? Bro, should I tell you what, bro? I think, yeah. I, 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 let me show you something. I think you'd be like proud of as like yeah. an older Muslim brother yeah. to see um, this guy, these guys, I think it's like his one brother. I, I just followed him on um, Twitter recently. He's like, I think he knows like Zach Bennett from that. And um, so these guys basically started a, so remember how um, there's this issue with a Muslim pro, right? Like mm -hmm. came out, like they're not, they weren't Muslim owned and then they were yeah, like yeah. handing over their privacy. Yeah. To people. So this, the, this guy has decided to create a, a prayer app. I don't know any information about this. I might be getting it wrong, but I believe that he's created a prayer app and they're like, um, I think they marketed it great. Uh, their three lines of marketing is no ads, privacy first, Muslim made. The three issues with <laughs> Muslim Pro, basically. And uh, you can even just see from this, like, one shot, like, the UI is is beautiful, isn't it? Mm. That's, like, something as a Muslim that I'm proud of. Yeah, it's like, actually, I've got nothing to do with it. Yeah. And I, from what I know, it's a young... For, I, have, I might be completely wrong, but from what I'm guessing, just because of, like, he knows Ben Diff and that, I'm assuming, like, it's, like, this kid, this guy is, like, a young... That's a prime example. 20-year-old, 19-year-old guy yeah, who beautiful. knows what out? beautiful UI is. I believe so, it's out. But look, and I want to support that. Is it called, what's it called? It's called... Uh, Pillars. Pillars, the Pillars app. But look, stuff like that should be common. Like, yeah. great execution, great design, great uh, experience. But stunning, mashallah. Yeah. That should be the norm. All I'm saying is the 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 minimal standard bar needs to be much higher. Yeah, for it's like for Muslims, yeah. Bro, because because design and creativity is communication. Yeah, hundred percent. So so the the biggest message out of this is to understand that you have uh you have the message that you're putting across, then you have the context, you know, and and without that context, it's very difficult to put a message across. And context is how that is communicated. So. For example, like you, you, me just saying like, and we've offered, bro, a, a great example is, um, bro, it comes back to us earlier, great product distribution, Islam, great product. A, 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 a Mulvi in a, in a, in a, in a little, in a, I'm just like really simplifying it, but in a, in a mosque where we're younger, giving you beats for something, terrible distribution. Does that make sense? Because that's not the right way of doing it. You're not getting the message across. You're not distributing it correctly. But a great distribution, it, 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 it a great distribution perfect distribution you know what i mean his wisdom his softness his bro we were just on our phone to him that called him the other day um shaz and i speaking to him you know asked him about amazing mashallah beautiful perfect example but, but, but that's not scalable 
Does that make yeah. sense? It but, is scalable because more people you, need to have great character. Correct. And, yeah, but, and, but, and, but and, you have and, to find and, a way of scaling that. With empathy. Yes. Yeah. 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 But no, but, but you can develop that through. I think it's the Im- is I think a lot of it is uh, image based as well. You know, it's like I think I think the images that have been built up over time. Like if you if you went to a majority of people and asked them, you know, uh, the few things that are synonymous with them generally about mosques. You know what I mean? There's things that can be improved. You know, but this, that should be a minimum standard. You know what I mean? Of acceptance, like the Apple Store. You know what I mean? There's a minimum standard, and I think that should be the 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 the. The st- wudu area should be clean. Wudu area should be queen. Uh, queen it should be it should be clean. Of course, like the just, signage should be clean. Yeah, yeah. Just, just. I think it's just small things. Like, of course, I would never want to disrespect any mosque because it's beautiful that it even exists. So I wouldn't do that. But I just think, uh, I mean, like the a Apple store, maintenance. the I Apple store mean. level, because bro, it has such an amazing impact on then the global distribution. Yeah. Think about like when you have someone who does a beautiful act. Yeah, like Islamically, but even for example, when you see a footballer break his fast on the pit. Bro, do you not think that's having a beautiful impact on people that are watching the game? Mm. Even if they're not Muslim, it's still a level of, wow. Well, Mahrez yesterday scored two goals, bro. And I said, it, and they were playing home. So chances are he was fasting. Yeah. So I'm saying on 16 hours fasting, the form that Mahrez was on, man. And when you're going to Champions League final, bro, that's that's the thing, that's that's great distribution. But the, again, those are small examples. But what I'm saying is when you put that into product format, like what these guys have done, what you do with mosques, or there's so many elements like what you can do with education, what you can do with Islamic libraries, what you can do, and but what happens happens nowadays is yes people are putting out things people are releasing books for kids they're releasing toys people are doing things but the product isn't great you know what i mean the product needs to be on such a standard that you know yourself is the best it, like looks, should, like a, it looks like a quick win we should, yeah we should be striving for the best mm. and that's the standard i feel like when you're speaking earlier towards that passion it's that it's that set that standard that if you looked at if you went to a shop and you saw that we need to get out of the the mindset i think a lot of listeners that are doing this who, uh, who are listening to this do have brands or start companies we often do it for the sake of just ticking the box of i have a company or i've done something or i've launched the thing is it the best mm. is it the best that you could do is it the best that exists in the world measure it with the greatest things that have ever existed not just something that you created and i think that's that's how we're able to create that level of excellence in in our communities but I'm, I'm passionate about that because I, I feel you know it's why I love working with Muslim creators as well because I think we can do it but again I don't like that opportunity opportunistic side of it which is why I haven't gone to that space you know what I mean of trying to be like you know I'm transforming a Muslim space type of quote unquote yeah right. and I think that you do a great job with that because um, it opens you up to a lot of criticism generally when you're trying to like yeah active like i think like what you're doing great is you're trying to like change something in an industry that you know very well which is like uh this like uh media software branding marketing like this sp- very specific space right like this startup world you're trying to make a change there and um the goal is that inshallah once you make it someone can say like just how they do with um Morris scoring two goals while fasting. If you feel sort of like, and they can they can just like great footballer, amazing that he attributes his success. And to how amazing I'm not would saying it be? That no, but how amazing would it be if those things were not even publicized? That's what you I'm know? saying. So yeah. so it's like even you don't have to like pu- yeah yeah like if you said that hey we do like imagine people just knew that in our headquarters there was you know. A, a prayer room a silent room whatever like whatever it is like it just exists it wasn't even an advert it wasn't like something we tell people mm. it just exists you know what i mean that's why um and uh, 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 sorry i'm not giving an example because actually counteracts what i was gonna say but uh, those type of things but it's just things that happen you know what i mean that like i said earlier it doesn't have to be muslim islamic principles are beautiful because they're just the right principles Correct. period yeah. so the fact that the right principles uh speaks to anyone it speaks to the fact that the right principle speaks to anyone it speaks to non-muslims um it speaks to people that don't even obviously b- believe in religion anyone that can understand uh, society and human behavior would can you can put in front of them a trait that of an islamic personality and then to be like that is the right thing versus the opposite yeah honesty you know I mean? at yeah, all cost, honest, yeah honesty not making integrity jokes, yeah like at people's expense at people's backbiting expense, yeah. like you're saying earlier like being empathetic towards people when someone walks in the room the level of respect you should have for them when you walk in their space how you are aware of their space all these small things so if these traits and culture like we're speaking how companies are built on culture these things can be ingrained to the culture of a company you're now running off those principles but in such an 
indirect way that when people do hear about it it's like oh wow there was our islamic principles mm. you know but you're not out there saying that because otherwise you do put yourself in that box of being like we're a justice type of company and that you will have a problem with this in the world unfortunately it's just the way um same way you know um world foods aisles do you know what i mean there's this battles that is so difficult to win mm. so it's better for me to try and build something on a global scale that i can then implement those type of uh, uh, principles into that would be that would be synonymous with anyone regardless of religion but fundamentally come from our teachers of Islam yeah I agree and those can be spoken about between people who have experienced it and that's what then is also a part of the Islamic principle isn't it because you're not showing off about it, it yeah you're doing it sincerely yeah. right yeah and I, I've been knowing that our reward will be with with Allah after like we're not we're not going to get anything like and also I think yeah, you can't look into people's well. hearts yeah. yeah so like it's very easy to judge someone and say oh like he's like you don't know what people are doing uh, privately and I I agree with that and often people that I've met that who who I still hold in very high regard you know uh, we'll start him humble uh, Sheikh Jamal bro many people like this who bro I would be I would be scared to say salam to them you know what I mean like intimidated to say salam to them. And you spend time around these people and you've seen them and they're the they, softest. They almost like they they're almost like, why would you think that about us? You know, that makes sense? it is so mind boggling because you're like, do you not realize who you, like it's that level of humility which is so beyond you? Like Sheikh Jamal, when I was speaking to him on the phone the other day, man, he was oh call me anytime, any question. I'm like, I could never even fathom myself doing that. I, like even that time I called him for I texted him the question. Tried to call him, he didn't call, but I felt so embarrassed. I felt bad that I texted him and tried to call him. I was like, I've, I've bothered him. And he called back and was on the phone for so long, as long as we needed. And I, man, it was just so beyond me that someone would even, at that stature, who you have that level of respect for, would do that. Um, but it's so, it's, it's so amazing because it's, it's so counterintuitive. But those things make it make it so much, you know, it makes it so um, much more attractive to to be like those people you're like man why can't more people be like that why can't why shouldn't we be like that like how crazy is that we cut each other up and you know don't give people the time of day who are we these people who are like the most beloved in Allah's eyes and um you know they 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 walk on his earth as if like it's just they're just gliding you know what I mean it's, yeah, it's amazing so inspirational man and the stuff that we worry about you're like bruv, this, I love that I love how yeah. like the most like in our eyes like the, the you, you start looking like Il, almost like elites, yeah, like yeah, yeah, certainly. people who you look up to are like the softest, are like harshest on themselves, but so soft to others and stuff like that. But also the fact that they they like, teach by leading by example, yeah, man, and not by te but not by telling. And there's not a there's not a um, there's, there's not any bad question. And again, if you compare this to the company, you can do it very very easily. Like let's say you have a boss. If you, you could imagine you could ask him any question and any question you asked him isn't a bad question mm. and he leads by example and he's all the time of day for everyone you know and uh, 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 um, he, he, he he's he, cleaning the office at the end of the day bro he's doing those type of things you yeah. know what I mean he's, he's fulfilling his duties um, you know he's harsh upon himself so he takes accountability for everything think about that bro these are these are principles of the greatest leaders in, in Islam and they can translate very easily to even leaders having companies today um, so th th I think that's where it is like Yes, the, there's the semantics of like decision making, like what you were saying earlier, that can make it tricky. Yeah. Um, but those are, are ultimately tests, aren't they? Like you, you, whenever you've reminded me that, look, leadership comes with great responsibility. It's a gift, but it also comes with great responsibility and something I have to take seriously. I never forget that. I always think of that. Like when I communicate with my employees or anyone that I work with, I'm always thinking like, man, like how I act today could have such a, tremendous impact on how they see islam yeah. I, I i was supposed to send something to um uh one of my staff yesterday and i said i'd do it when i stopped driving and I, and the whole day i was driving you know and i got home and it was if thought didn't manage to happen and this morning she asked me again and i it, i felt so bad it was it was one document it wasn't even like uh, anything crazy but it was important to her yeah. and that made me feel so bad like i apologize sincerely i was like i shouldn't have like I, and, and obviously it was like, you know, it's nothing like, it's fine you've done it now but it's a fact that what you said to me before which is like that leadership comes with that responsibility sure. that integrity that yeah. if I've said to you I'll do it today I should have followed up I should have yeah. saved it in my Siri or something you know but then feeling that because that feeling you feel is a guilt and then you're like I have to do better and that's where you'll be harsh on yourself so now I know in future if I make that promise make a note of it Omar make sure you do it or stop over and do it there and then whatever it is understand it's important to that person because if you do 
the if, if it's such a small thing, but the effect it has on that person mm. is tremendous, isn't it? Yeah, that's that, that's what having empathy is about, really, isn't it? It's like yeah. being conscious of other people's feelings and stuff. But like you have that. to be harsh on yourself for that. Like you, you can't to. overlook that and be like, oh yeah, you have to that you're yeah, oh yeah, I did next day. Like, oh, yeah, here it is. Now, nah, man, you'd easily do that. Yeah, like you can easily go, oh, like they won't mind that I do that, but you don't know that. And yeah, it's man. more important to be harsh on yourself and to be <laughs> well, to be harsh on yourself and to yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, bro, we have to end the podcast because the camera's bugging out and stuff. Too right, sure. But it's fine. It's also like late as it is yeah, and you yeah, need to hear the second stuff. So um, thanks, bro. I appreciate you jumping in, man, on this last minute one. Nah, man. Thanks for having me, man. It's, it's super fun. And thanks for the, having me at your house with all of this. But I know we've got someone junk here. Awful food, yeah. I feel so bloated, man, but hopefully get some sleep now as well, inshallah. Yeah. All right. Well, well thank, thank you man. guys for listening to this episode. And um, I will see you next week, hopefully back in the studio. Or if not, then... Uh, hopefully over the next few weeks we'll get back into that studio because right now everything's like just I'm technically on paternity leave right now my, uh, my family keep asking me like are you on paternity leave I'm like yeah kind of like but this this is the only work that I've done is like an episode which is like I sit down with my brother having a chat so it's like very I mean very blessed very blessed paternity yeah very blessed yeah, paternity yeah, yeah. but yeah technically I'm meant to be completely off but um, yeah I'll be still doing the episodes and we've still got things coming out inshallah so goodbye see ya